This is a wind sensor. It's a thermal anemometer. This is the modern device, wind sensor, Rev P, Rev Papa. And um, basically, you know, it's a hot wire. You blow on it, it gets colder, the resistance changes. And this Yogi Ima Bobby picks that up and can tell you, hey, it's windy or hey, something windy. Why is this pretty cool? And because it has no moving parts and it's real small. And these uh, uh, thermal anemometers can be better at picking up um, a bit of a breeze in the room. So I guess if you wanted to check, uh, it's kind of is the window open or is the ventilation getting in, you could use this and uh, it would tell you if there's any kind of air, decent airflow in the room. So the seller's website said that you can use this with a uh, Arduino. Uh, so I'm actually just using it with a micro bit in a kind of more of a, a school context because it's an easy project to do. Because, I mean, the only weird thing this needs is a 12 volt power source. So I just stuck, you know, a bunch of batteries together, eight of them, and um, that's the power source. So nine to 12 volts. And uh, I think it needs like eight volt minimum to really work, 12 volts you can properly blow on it because if it's low voltage um apparently it uh, kind of flattens out if it runs out of power but the 12 volts with a nice and beef unit will work just great so let's see how i wired this up for the micro bit the um ground here just goes into the ground pin on the micro bit it's labeled gnd it's black on the breakout board that's the ground the 9 to 12 volts power source here this guy um well that goes back to the positive end of my um, battery pack, the one I made from the eight batteries. So that's the plus. Um, I should say I've also connected the negative end of those batteries back to the same ground pin as before on the micro bit. Those need to be grounded together, I would imagine. Um, then I have not been using uh, the temperature or the shutdown uh, pins, but I have been using this third pin. Okay, this guy here out which is the, um, uh, which I suppose you can use to calculate the wind, because uh, that's the number that sends it going down when it gets breezy or when I blow on it. So um, that I've connected to pin one on the micro bit because that's my input pin. And that's it. It's really only three pins I'm using here. I mean, it also has a temperature uh, TMP pin and uh, a shutdown pin there, but I'm not using that for the moment. The battery pack, what I did was I just got two of these four AA battery packs and I soldered a wire between uh, a positive and a negative on the tops. And then my remaining positive and negatives are my positive and negatives for the battery. And that's uh, the positive that goes to 12 volt on the sensor and the ground that goes to the ground pin on the micro bit. If you're using crocodile clips or something like that, um, you're going to have to figure out a way of connecting both the ground from the battery to the ground pin of the micro bit and also the ground from the sensor to the ground pin of the micro bit. So there's going to be some junction there. I was spoiled for choice here, though, because on my um, board here, all these ground pins are connected. So I could just connect both of them to uh, two nearby. So you can see here where I've connected this ground here, um, the very first pin to the ground on the micro bit. All these grounds are connected. And um, I connected the uh, out, the analog out, which goes from zero to 3.3 volts, it goes up and down. And that I've connected to this guy here, pin one. And you can see here that the ground from the battery and the ground from this are both connected together. It's important that they're connected. So you can see this is the amount of air moving up and down the room. Now, it looks like a good bit of difference, but actually there's nothing in it there. This is super, super zoomed in. So what you're looking at there is the difference between 434 and 444. Okay, so it's barely anything. I'm just gonna go and open the window and see if we get a bit of a breeze. Yeah, definitely, look at that. It can pick up the fact that I've opened the window now, I, I can't really feel any air movement myself just standing here, but apparently, apparently there is. Looks like the cooling fans on the PC as well have turned on. So it might actually settle at a different point now. I'm just going to try blow on it and see what happens then. 
Um, this might be a little bit ASM work, so I'm going to blow on the left side of the phone. Sorry if that was your left ear. There you go. Wow, look. Shut up to 525. Okay, so it definitely can pick up a little bit of wind. Let's just pass my hand in front of it and just see if I just do this. Is that enough? Wow. Yes, it was. I notice as well as I talk, it tends to fluctuate a lot more um, because I'm quite close to it. So let me see if I can, uh, if I just sit here kind of and breathe beside it, will it pick up my actual individual breaths? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, it's kind of picking up the breaths. You can kind of see a peak for each breath. So there you go. You could use it to detect breathing. You know, you can see the pause between breaths. So that's pretty cool. And let's try and decrease airflow by just putting something in front of it. If I just put the whole thing in here, now I've got to be careful because this thing is super hot. It's like the tip of this thing is really, really, really hot. So actually it's not even just me moving this around isn't getting it quite where it needs to be. But you can see it really is going down. It's kind of going down quite a lot. So I'm now down to four... 26, which I don't think I was down to before by just really reducing the airflow. I'd say if I could put it in a sealed container, it would go down even more. So that's what you could use to zero this instrument. But just be aware that the tip of this is pretty hot. So just make sure it's not touching anything because it'll just melt plastic. So let's look at the code for this. All I did was on start, I said while true, keep repeating this. Um, take the analog read pin for pin one, wait a bit, do it again, wait a bit, do it again, do it three times, then add them up, divide by three, that'll get the average. Why did I do that? Um, uh, well, I use this chunk of code to read a lot of different sensors. Um, I do find some sensors are a little bit overly sensitive. I mean, there are sensors, so they can be sensitive, um, but they tend to go up and down. like. In the space of half a second, they'll take 100 measurements and it'll be up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And what I'll get, instead of a straight liner graph, I'll get this almost like rectangle, a accordion compressed of so many jagged lines, it's all over the place. Whereas what this little trick does is instead of um, having one very sensitive measurement, it'll kind of get an average of three. So it's less prone to jumping up and down and it gives you a smoother curve and over time a more reliable bit of data, do you know? Then what the yellow block here does, um, this is the scroll text uh, extension. All right, I use this because the micro bit when it reads stuff across the screen is super slow. Um, so especially if you're putting any words or you just want the data is coming quicker than it can get across you kind of get you get a backlog right so this speeds up things there's a better way to do it i suppose you could just go into the python and see this 50 just change that to well actually it's 50 which means it's quite fast so i think the default is like 100 or 200 or something like that which is quite slow so the lower that the faster the text goes nice thing about this as well and uh, this extension is that you can put this text sideways which you can't normally do the last bit down here, serial write number that just writes to serial, whatever you're doing. And serial write line, I found when I put that in often enough, it goes to the next line. And when I don't put it in, it tends to just write all the numbers along the same line. And I'm like, why am I getting five quintillion, five hundred thousand, uh, and five thousand and fifty? And they're like, wait a second, that's I think there could just be a bunch of 500s or 50s just joined together. That's not one big number. So um, when you put that serial right line, it goes onto the next line and is less prone to kind of give you everything in one line. So that's it. That's the wind sensor Rev P. Uh, it's a great piece of kit. Um, I'll put the link to the website in the uh, description below where you can get one of these guys. As I said, you probably should do this with, you know, Ar Arduino, or you could use it with a Raspberry Pi if you have an analog to digital converter, which I didn't have handy. That's why I went for the micro bit. Um, uh, and as well, it's cool doing things with micro bits because it's like, it's like making things with Duplo, you know? It's 
block code. It's almost silly. It's easy. Um, so uh, probably though, if I was doing it in a proper project, I might use an Arduino because an Arduino could very quickly send it to a website like ThingSpeak or Firebase, where it's a nice table and it'll draw graphs and everything for you over time. So you can be sitting there looking at your ThingSpeak website and you'd be like, oh, it's windy in the living room today or outside, I guess, or you can do something like that. Or you can be like, oh, it's very poor airflow in that room. So pretty cool. And if you've ever been sitting at your brother's birthday party and you watch them blow out the candles and you're like, yeah, I could have done better. You know, I think he blew them out, but like, I feel like I'm better at blowing out candles. Now you can find out if you all just blow on top of this sensor one at a time, it will give you a literally a score for how good you are at blowing out birthday candles. Finally, a scientific way of measuring who is the best at blowing out candles.